It's lunchtime again, and I have another meal I want to share with you. This is something I make often at home, but I have not made it in the woods. So today is as much of an experiment as it is anything else, and you get to see me pass or fail, I guess. I'm going to be making scrambled eggs. Okay, nothing special there, but scrambled egg with homemade kinogenic flatbreads that I'll be wrapping the scrambled eggs in. If you're interested in seeing how that turns out, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to talk for a minute about the flatbreads because that's really the star of the show here. And the reason I say that is because one of the things that people on a ketogenic diet give up is bread. Bread made from flour is uh, not good for you on a ketogenic diet. It is extremely dense with processed carbohydrates and will spike your insulin like crazily so it's not something that's recommended having said that though there are a lot of recipes out there and how you can make a keto adapted breads now they're not yeast breads i think i've well the bannocks for instance that i've been using in some of my video videos that's an adaptation of something that has less uh, enriched carbohydrates like a traditional wheat flour bannock because it's made from almond flour or almond flour combined with uh, quite often coconut flour and there's a few other things you can make it with. There are some challenging challenges to get it come out turn out as nice as a regular wheat flour bannock but it can be done. Well that's the same thing with flatbreads and that's what I'm going to be tr trying to make. Well okay again I've made them at home I just have not made these in the woods. I'm going to be making some flatbreads using almond flour with some coconut flour and a few other ingredients that I'll be frying in a fry pan that I'll be using to wrap my egg scrambled egg mixture up in. Um, again it's the flatbreads that are the star of the show here because you could wrap anything you can make fajitas, quesadillas, uh, burritos, uh, tacos, I guess anything else that you want anything you can think of that you would wrap up in some type of a flatbread like a pita or a naan or any of the other types of flatbreads that are out in any number of cultures then this will work for that so uh, yeah that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to take you down to my surface, working surface here in a moment, but I want to start this out by asking you a question. So I have had a number of questions on the foods that I've been making and preparing for you recently because of the keto nature or ketogenic nature of them. I've had some interesting comments, a few people saying, I'm on a ketogenic diet, this is great, I'm looking for ideas to, for out in the woods, so thank you for sharing, please continue. Other people are saying, um, that's a terrible, dangerous diet and you know, you're going to give yourself heart disease and, and all kinds of issues that they claim it will give me because of the high fat nature of the diet. And uh, yeah, well, uh, here's my question. Would you like me to prepare a video specifically dedicated to the ketogenic diet and why I think it's highly appropriate for people who go out into the woods? If you are, please put that in the comment section below. I've been doing some research and some preparation for it, but I just want to make sure that people are interested in seeing something like that. Uh, there are challenges with cooking a keto meal in the woods. Not so much for me because it's most of mine are day hikes or simple overnights, so I can afford to carry heavier items like eggs. Um, but if you're an ultralight hiker, this is really a challenging diet to be on. I've been looking for information on ultralight ketogenic foods. I have some and I'll share in, in that longer video if you're interested. But yeah, by all means, if you're interested in having me do that, then put that in the comment section below. I do want to share one comment with you because I guess we'll pose this as a question. My friend Lonnie from Far North Bushcraft and Survival, most of you know Lonnie. I wish we could ever get together. I think we'd enjoy each other's company. Lonnie posted uh, a question to me recently that uh, given the, the nature of the cooking that I'm doing later, why don't I create a ketogenic outdoorsman's cookbook? And to be honest, I, I smiled when, when Lonnie made that comment and I thought, uh, that's a great idea, but that's not me. I can't write a book like that. I don't know enough about cooking. I don't know enough about the ketogenic diet. But I started looking and there is no good source of recipes. Uh, I don't know what to say here. I'm not sure that I'm the person to write this, but if that's an interest of yours, then why don't you comment on that as well? If you know of a source of outdoor cooking for ketogenic uh, diet, then please put that in the comment section below. There are thousands of YouTube channels, Facebook groups, uh, books available on this, but not very many 
at least none that I could find, dedicated to the outdoorsman or the outdoors woman. And that's what I want to keep as a focus here. Okay, now <laughs> let's get down and start making the flatbreads. All right, let's get started. What I thought I would do to start is show you what I'll be using, and then I'll break down the order of the work that I'm going to be doing. So this is a fry pan that I picked up at uh, Value Village, our thrift store locally. And this is known as, I think if I can say, if I say it right, as a Pele pan. So what I liked about it is the fact that it just had handles on the outside, a flat so surface on it. And uh, uh, it's carbon steel. So that's what's really kind of cool. And it's not ultra light, but it's not really all that heavy either. But I like the fact that I can pick it up on either side to move it. And uh, I'll put any information I can about Pele pans in the show notes below and the type of cooking that's traditionally done with it. Now you can see that it's starting to discolor in the center and that's quite intentional to be honest. So when I cleaned this out and I brought it down to a shiny surface again and uh, then cleaned all the materials out that I used, I had to start to reestablish a seasoning in the carbon steel which you can do very much like cast iron and the seasoning is basically a process of burning thin coats of oil into the pan and so that it bonds with the metal. So that's what that is. That's the first level of seasoning that's starting to take place in the pan. I don't consider it fully seasoned yet, but it does take time. And really it's something that's better done outdoors. And yes, I know you can do it in the oven, but I like doing it outdoors and build it up slowly over time. So that's the pan I'm going to be using when it comes to scrambling my eggs and everything. Uh, I have another use for it, but quickly let me show you what I'll be using. There's two eggs, and in this container I have some vegetables, which includes green and red peppers, some onions, a few mushrooms, and some ham that is all cooked ham, all chopped up. So that will be going into the mix on the fry pan. And along with that, we'll go in some cheddar cheese as well that I've all grated up. When that is cooked, I have an avocado here that I will be uh, cutting up and putting into each of the, the flatbreads for my lunch. I think I probably have more food than I could possibly eat, so I'll be taking some home, which is okay. It's great, you know, re to reheat later. And finally, as a dressing on top, I have some chipotle mayo. So this is just simple mayonnaise. Sorry, no, this is sriracha mayo. Mayo mayonnaise, which is also great on the ketogenic diet, as are avocados, as is cheese. Uh, this is just mixed sriracha and mayonnaise. That's all that is. So that'll be my top dressing. And my spice kit, because of course you have to add spices when you're cooking. Olive oil. And here's an unusual ingredient to bring into the woods. Apple cider vinegar. Now why apple cider vinegar? It has everything to do with the flatbread. So this flatbread recipe has a twist from other ones that I've used. So the primary ingredients, and of course I'll list the full recipe in the show notes for you, but the primary ingredients, without giving you the, the amounts of each, are almond flour, coconut flour, uh, psyllium husk, very important in this, and I'll explain why in a minute, baking soda rather than baking powder. And baking soda will act like baking powder to give some rye, some leavening to a flatbread, but in order to activate the baking soda, you need something that's quite acidic, hence the apple cider vinegar. So that's what's going to go in, combined with the baking soda, to give it a little bit of rise. Now, these are flatbreads. They're not a loaf, and it's not a bannock, so it, they don't rise very much. I'll also be adding some oil into this. There is some salt in there as well, of course, because salt has to be added in to uh, bind, help bind. The psyllium husk. That's the primary binding agent for this flatbread. When you use a wheat flour, of course, wheat flour has gluten. This is gluten-free. Somebody asked me if these are gluten-free things that I've been making. By the very nature, nature of it being made from almonds and coconuts, yeah, it's a gluten-free recipe. Uh, you just have to be careful. Don't introduce any gluten by accident from any, anything you might put in it, like starches and cornstarch and things like that. I don't, so there's, there's no gluten in this one. Psyllium husk is also gluten-free. There's more psyllium husk in this than there would be in my Bannock recipes, because psyllium husk is taking the place of the gluten to help hold this together. And it works quite well, but in order to really activate the psyllium husk, you add hot water to the mix. So I've got to get my kettle on here in a moment and get some hot water. Hot water combines with the psyllium and the soda and the, everything else to create the binding action that will create the dough. So uh, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be mixing it up in this bowl. 
I did say there was one more thing I wanted to do with the fry pan. I'm going to be using this for forming my, my flatbreads. This and a water bottle to act as a rolling pin. And I did bring out somewhere here in my collection a little bit of parchment paper to keep it from sticking. So I'll put a layer of parchment paper down on the fry pan. My ball of dough, another layer of uh, parchment paper, roll it out to see if I can get something as close to the size of the bottom of that pan as I can. We'll see how, uh, how skilled I am or not, or how skilled I'm not, one or the other. Okay, I guess the first thing to, for me to do is to get some water onto a boil, and then I can start mixing up the flatbreads, and I'll show you what happens from there. All right, it took a few minutes to get my water to a boil. I probably should have put it on before I even started the video just to make sure it was going to be hot. Uh, just to let you know, and you're going to see this in a minute, the stove that I'm using today is my Brennerly Hobo stove that I previously reviewed. I'm making a follow-up video on it today, so it's actually going to feature in this video as well as another video that I'm making at the same time. Uh, I'm going to be using charcoal in it. Right now, I just used it with the Trangia adopter to heat the water up that uh, I'm using to make the flatbread with. But when it comes to frying up the eggs and cooking the flatbreads, uh, I'm going to be having charcoal in it. So in a few minutes' time, I have to get that started. The sequencing of timing is important when you're out in the woods. So I tried to figure out what should I should be working on first. So obviously, I made my first mistake. I should have got my water hot before I started my video so that when I got to the stage of having it, getting ready to mix it in, it would have been hot already. Now, if I was really smart, I would stop right now and get the charcoal started started because it takes a while for charcoal to light up but to be honest I'm not in that much of a rush. I'm making the flatbreads first because they take a little bit of time. I can use the fry pan to make the flatbreads then set them aside. Two things here. When you mix this dough up, and you'll hear me say this again in a few minutes, um, when you add all the wet ingredients and you get the mixture, you then set the mixture aside for a few minutes so that it will start to finish absorbing all the moisture that's in there and it will become more doughy, more pliable, more plasticine-like is probably the best way to describe it. And then once again, after you do that and you form the flatbreads and fry them in the fry pan or cook them in the fry pan, then you're going to let those rest again for a few more minutes before you start adding your contents to the center of them. So it works out well. I'll be able to rest my dough while I start the charcoal. I'll cook them up. I'll rest them while I get the rest of my lunch prepared. All right, so let's get back into action here. First thing is to add into this amount is some olive oil and it will be one tablespoon maybe a little bit more we'll see and because I need to save some for frying with and the apple cider vinegar so I'm going to pour that in, all in at the same time and just mix it through as what best I can trying to distribute the oil around as best I can it doesn't become really crumbly like you would if you were using shortening or butter in a regular wheat flour but it does pretty good it comes pretty close the bowl is none too big for this. I probably have, well, I do have quite a bit of uh, flour here. Um, this will make, if it works out correctly, will make four eight-inch flatbreads. At least it does when I'm at home. So we'll see how well it does here. If I can get them uh, to size. Now, the thing about making flatbreads is... It takes some skill and some practice, neither of which I have a whole lot of, to get a good, round, thin flatbread. So my experience and what I understand from other people who do this more than I do is if you're not really good at doing that, then err on the side of a little thicker and a little smaller and just cook them until they're done. Uh, they'll still work. It's just ideally you try to get them to be as flat as possible. Now I'm going to be introducing about a cup of hot water but I'm going to be doing it a bit at a time so that I don't introduce too much and I'll know when it's uh, not quite sloppy, a little drier than sloppy but if that's if that's a way of describing things in my non-technical language. Oh, maybe half a cup there now. It almost foams up when you add the water. It actually does kind of foam up, and that's the action of the psyllium as well as the baking soda. You can see what half a cup of water does. Make sure I don't lose my ingredients. And not that I'm trying to make excuses for myself, but the wind picked up. 
And the deer flies are out. I wasn't expecting them. A little bit more water. So what's life without a bit of a challenge, right? Yeah, you want it a little bit wet when you're finished this part of the process because, as I said, you let it set. You can form the ball, but you let it set for about 10 minutes and it will be much firmer when you come back to it. In fact, I think I'm just about there. I think I'll add a tiny bit more water because my experience is it really does firm up as it rests. Yeah, that's pretty close. All right. So I can either pick this up with my hands now and form the ball or just kind of spoon it into shape, which is what I think I'm going to do because, you know what, I didn't wash my hands before I started like I should have. I don't want to start handling <laughs> this but until I get my hands washed. And I may as well get the charcoal on at the same time. All right, that works. All right, see? There we are. Formed up. And now I'll just put that aside for a few minutes while I get the charcoal started. All right, now the fun begins. Charcoal is almost up to heat. Let's see if we can't form a couple of uh, flatbreads. So there's my dough having rested maybe five, almost 10 minutes. What I'll do is I'm gonna form this into balls. It's actually still warm from the hot water I put in it. I'll put them on my platter and then I'll start rolling them out. Here are my pieces of uh, parchment paper or my piece of parchment paper. I need to cut it in half yet and then I can uh, form it put it underneath the edge here to keep it from uh, blowing away here as the wind picks up. So, yeah, this is nice. It is formed into a springy ball, I guess you can see. And from this, I'll form four smaller balls. It looks roughly half. You're not kneading this dough, or kneading as in K-N-E-A-D, uh, like you would with bread. I'm just kind of trying to bring it together into a consistent form. I think I've got four relatively the same size balls here. I guess I could have left them right in the bowl, couldn't I? And here comes the fun. We'll see how well this works out. My water bottle. Maybe I can just leave it all together like this. Take one of these, hold my hand down as the wind doesn't blow things away. I can start by kind of flatten it out like you would a hamburger patty, give it a head start here, center it a little bit. So this I have not done, water bottle rolling pin. But it should work if I take my time. I'm just turning the bread as I go to kind of spread it out. Uh, using the parchment paper, I know it's not your traditional way of cooking in the woods, and I don't know that it's absolutely necessary, but I will tell you, it makes life easy. You can do a good job of rolling these out. That looks pretty good. I'm thinking I will put these on the platter as I prepare them. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then from there, I can fry them up in the fry pan. I'll do one more, and then I'll cut away, and we'll come back when we get the fry pan all hot and ready. All right, spread it out. You know, at home, I have a, a tortilla press. Uh, if you make flatbreads at home, find a tortilla press. I picked mine up at the thrift store, so it's not a cast iron traditional one or a wooden one, as I've seen them made. Mine's a cast aluminum, but boy, does it ever do a good job. You make a ball, the appropriate size, put it in the center, put the top lid, top lid down, roll the handle over, and uh, you have a perfectly sized, shape, thickness, tortilla ready to throw in a fry pan. Flatbreads, easiest bread in the world to make there we go. Here's another one. That can be a little thinner over here in this corner, I think. There. All right, I'll do the others and we'll get them into the fry pan one at a time. And I'll show you how that's done. So hopefully you can see the Brennelly 
with the charcoal in it. Down here, it is glowing red. The metal is, it's glowing. It's really, really hot. And I'm not sure that's a good thing. Not for the stove so much. I'm sure the stove can handle it, but it's more a matter of controlling the heat from my fry pan. So I'm gonna to have to be extra cautious. Uh, sometimes you fry fry breads or flatbreads with a really hot, dry pan. No, uh, no oil or anything, and you're just looking to have them puff up, and they will. But this one, at least the recipe calls for, is to have an oiled pan so they're not going to stick. So I'm going to have to be extra cautious. Now, putting in my oil. I have, no, I don't have my ghee. Ghee would be better because it has this higher smoke point. But I'll move that oil around before I drop my first one in. Let it get a little hotter. Uh, normally I like to see the oil kind of shimmering from the heat, then you know it, and it's shimmering already. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna be moving fast. Uh, two minutes per side is what's recommended. But again, out here in the woods, I have no idea how well that's gonna work. And it sizzles. So I'll watch that, see what happens. Try not to burn them. Now the other trick is going to be flipping them. I didn't have a problem at home because of course I was using a good size spatula. I have yet to carve myself one from wood out here. So I've got this little tiny spatula, or not spatula, lifter, flipper, I guess, not a spatula. Could be a spatula. In fact, it's what I'm going to be using to serve my egg mixture on when I, when I get to that point. So I, again, I'm going to cook all four of these flatbreads set them aside to rest, then I'll get the mixture in that I'll be putting inside of each flatbreads started. Well, looks, looks good so far. Not ready for a flip over yet. I think I'll get my gloves out. I can handle it, but might as well use my gloves anyway. And of course, we'll, we'll do this one flatbread and uh, then I'll do the rest of them off camera so you don't have to watch me cooking up each one of these. Not re ready for a flip, but might be if I can get under it. A little stuck. I don't know, it's doing all right well-seasoned panned, and when I did this at home, I could just, the thing would slide all over the pan. It's not quite that well-seasoned. I think I need to do something with the stove here. One of the things I forgot to do, these are the aluminum crossbars that you use when you use alcohol in the Brennelly. And by putting the pan on without them, I had just occluded all the airflow, so there was no airflow escaping from the stove. Uh, you gotta have airflow, so put those on. That means I have to be a little bit more. Oh yeah, looks like a pancake, doesn't it? Now well, that's pretty much what it is in a lot of ways, but it's a pancake that's flexible when they're finished and something I can use for a wrap. So that's okay, that one's good. Another minute or so, and then I'll take this one out and I'll do the rest of them off camera. Move the oil around that I have. Oh, good. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but they're puffing in the center like a flatbread would. If my pan was really well seasoned, I think I'd try this without oil. Uh, maybe as I get more experience in the pan more seasoned, I'll do that, but. Eh, almost there. If you're not sure, flip it again. Ah, look at that. This takes a bit of time. There's no question, you know, this is not your quick shore lunch that you do over an alcohol stove and pour water in a, uh, a bag of 
freeze-dried materials, this is work. But the results are so much better. Okay, I think that one is ready to come off. Let's see, I'm gonna flip it one more time. Yeah, I don't want it to get any browner than that. And then I'll do the rest of them off camera and we'll come back when it's time to cook up the rest of the meal. All right, this is the last. Oh yeah. Give it a quick flip, make sure. Yep, looks good. Here's my platter of the other ones done. So I can put those aside. Get a little new oil into the pan. Still really hot. You can see the seasoning is starting to spread out a little bit, the darkening. It has to, you have to move the pan around if you want that seasoning to move around as well. Smoking already. It's hot. In fact, I think I'll take it off for half a second. As it is going to be very, very hot. Ooh, that is hot. So the mixture that I have that I'm going to throw into the pan as soon as I put it back on, I mentioned was some cooked ham, uh, mushrooms, green peppers, red peppers, and onions. So that won't take very long to cook up in the pan. Then I'll add the eggs and the cheese to that. Of course, there'll be some spices added along the way. Get that pan back on. I think I may have overestimated how much... I can eat. That's all right. Once it's cooked up, I'll be able to uh, store it back in this container of anything I don't eat. Get everything out, all the onions out. That looks good. So this part of it is not special <laughs> anyway. Well, I guess it is special, but it's not unique. I'm sure you've done this yourself or watched other people do it, but I will add a little spices. And this is Munch, no, this isn't. This is Cajun spices. Cajun spices, I thought it was Montreal steak spice. I have no shortage of salt. That's one of the things about a, a ketogenic diet. You drink a lot of water, you pass a lot of water, and you end up watering out or thinning out your electrolytes. So adding some salt is not the danger you might think it is if you're on a traditional diet. How about that? Yeah, those are the two good things. Garlic, salt, and Cajun spices, which I can smell now. Let's get this stuff moving. Oh, yeah. So this just needs to be cooked a few minutes. Not the ham. The ham was already cooked, but the onions and everything else need to be cooked down. And then I'll add the eggs in. And then finally the cheese at the last minute. And we'll be good to go. And I'll bring you back. Geez, did I mention the deer flies are out? I'm gonna have to do something about that. All right, eggs. You know, I can't do that with gloves on, can I? Not easily, anyway. Now, I uh, prefer to cook eggs in something that's not too hot. Scramble them too fast. But uh, this should be okay. And it won't take very long with this heat before this is ready. Well, the seasoning where it did season is great so far. It is nothing sticking to it. it. Takes a little while to get it to that point. In fact, I think I'll throw the cheese in right now. Cheddar cheese. I think my charcoal is dying down a little bit, which makes this part just a little easier. I'll throw a few more pieces in so I can put my water on for coffee. And I'll let this rest for a second. I think I'll take it off now, because I still have to prepare my avocado to go with it. Boy, this is a big meal. Yeah, I won't be eating all this, I don't think, anyway. Okay, that's ready. So I'm taking that off of the heat. I'm setting it aside. I'm going to work on the avocado and I'll bring it back when it's time to... I'm going to set that there. When it's time to assemble our dinner. 
Okay, you're going to have to work with me as I put these together. And the reason being is I've got them in three separate uh, containers. I left the, the fried egg mixture in, right in the fry pan to keep it warm. I have the uh, flatbread sitting in my, my platter. And I have the avocado uh, sitting in the bowl. So I'm going to have to assemble them one at a time. And as I said, what makes this meal uh, ketogenic or what makes it special is the flatbread. So I want to show you those as I assemble it together. What makes it ketogenic is a combination of the low calorie or low carbohydrate, not low calorie by any means. This is not a low calorie meal. It's quite a high calorie meal in fat. But the majority of the calories are coming from fat sources and ones that I was very specific to add. The eggs, the cheese, the olive oil, and uh, yeah, so those are the primary fat sources. But it's also fairly high in protein, not as high in fat, or in protein as it is in fat, but there is quite a bit of protein in this from the ham and the eggs and the cheese, of course. It is the combination of low carbohydrate, high fat and high protein that make this a ketogenic meal. Uh, any way you look at it, this tastes great. And it's probably worth saying, as always, is you don't have to be on a ketogenic diet to use this. In fact, the flatbread recipe works for anybody who's on a gluten-free diet. That's not the reason I'm eating it. Of course, it's because it's relatively low carbohydrate. That's the reason I made these. But if you really wanted to, carry some flatbreads that you bought at the store into the woods and make these. It works so great. If you're good at making flatbreads, then do it with regular wheat flour, if that's your thing. But, okay, enough talk. Let me assemble this together. So the first thing I want to do I show you these flatbreads, if I can, up close. And the reason being, yes, they're not perfectly round, uh, sue me. Uh, I wanted to show you that they are flexible, flexible enough to hold food inside of them. Uh, they're not big, but that's as big as I can make them with the equipment I had right here. All right, so let me assemble one and then I'll bring it back to show you some of the egg mixture. Tell me I've done this, yep. And a couple pieces of avocado. Not that piece, that piece hit the ground, unfortunately, and everything stuck to it. And I'm competing with the ants, surprise. And a little bit of the sriracha mayo. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Again, see if I can show this to you. There we go, okay. Flatbread, I'm trying to do this upside down. I don't know why I have so much trouble with this. Flatbread, that egg mixture, avocado, and the sriracha mayo, and a fly trying to get at it. My back and frame. Okay, that'll work. Uh, they're small, the breads are, but So the first thing that jumped out of me in that one was the uh, sriracha mayo. It's quite spicy. And the avocado, that's what squeezed out first. But then the, underneath it is the eggs with the onions, peppers, mushrooms, and the spices in that. A lot of garlic, of course. Mmm. My napkin handy. Wow. At the risk of saying this is the, again, saying again that this is the best meal I've ever made out here, I won't. I'll just say it's another great one. It's another one at the top of my list of meals. This one was a lot of work. I won't, uh, I won't deny that. There was a lot of work in getting this done out here. But the satisfaction of being able to make flatbreads that you can wrap up things in and the fact that it's made in the woods. How do you beat this? Wonderful. But there's a lot of food there. Anybody handy that they wanna come in and join me? I've got enough, I think, for at least two people. Okay, uh, that's all I have on this meal. So I think I'll just ask again, if you have interest in hearing more about the ketogenic diet and how to apply it to being out in the woods, then just say so in the comments and I'll work on that some more. If you have any questions about this meal, 
And what I did, and, and as I mentioned, I'll put the recipe and directions for making the flatbreads in the comment section or in the video description. Then add any questions you have. If you have any suggestions for future meals and things that I may be able to do out here, uh, uh, by all means add that. I'm really getting into this cooking. I wasn't as much of a cook in the woods before as I am now. Hamburgers maybe, hot dogs, sausages. But now I'm kind of getting fancy, fancy by my standards anyway. And uh, it is more work and takes more planning, but the rewards are worth it. Okay, that's all I have to say. I'm going to finish off this meal and compete with the ants and the flies. Get out of there uh, and finish it up. And uh, in the meantime, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.